Hi, today we use the Lyra attribute sets fully in blueprints and yeah, kind of follow the way what we did with the abilities. We have a blueprint here that grants us something, in this case an attribute set, meaning the moment I overlap, I run into it, I would expect that I get a new attribute set to my character class. And yeah, let's put here the auto output lock. And yeah, obviously I get something from strength. I get a gameplay tag, I get a relative strength, a base strength, a current strength. So things are happening in the background. Let us have a look how that actually works. So, um, first thing to see a bit more, we take this ability, this debug ability, and we see here, yeah, now we seem to have more than one attribute set. The one comes with Lyra, with the max self, and the strength, endurance, intelligence, dexterity. That's one we created in the last tutorial. So that is something that is now initialized, so it has base values. And let's see how that works. A couple of things are now exposed to blueprint coming from this base class game attribute set. That is the class that the the, the generator the generator is <laughs> is uh, generating. So it's derived from attribute set Lyra attribute set, and it will um, give you two functions attached to AC and remove from AC. The hero class itself does the same as it does with the abilities. It looks if a certain interface was implemented and then it expects to get an attribute set from, from the blueprint, from the BP attribute granter. Looking at the granter, you actually have this grant um, area where you say, okay, grant to this actor, our hero, and then grant these attribute set. And looking here, we only see attrib attribute sets derived from the game attribute sets from this base class and including the old one from the last tutorial. So if we find an, a valid attribute set coming from the granter, we then construct out of it, out of, out of that class, an object and can attach that object, this attribute set to our ASC, or we can also remove it. Both functions are now exposed and are a function of the base class. Here we have an initialization routine that uh, sets the default values of it. We will look at that in the next video. We just concentrate now on the functions available in Blueprints. Everything from the attribute set needs to have a cast, meaning you should store it as a variable and then really just refer to that variable in the future um, to not do that every time you have to check a value. This one is get attributes for attribute set class, so I would expect that it shows me all the attributes that are hanging on that certain class and shows us also the value in the log. Logging I can do with this game attribute set as a log filter. And you see here, for example, in the last line that we have this attribute set and it has four attributes like strength at five, endurance at five, and intelligence at seven, whatever that means. But it seems to be there, it's initialized and we can use it. So that is one of the first routines that are quite handy. Now we want to have direct access to the value stored here, getting the value out of it. Same thing, we have to cast our attribute set. We should store that as a variable in the future to have access to it. And then we have these three basic functions, these pure functions, get base strength, get kernel strength, or get relative strength. That is oh, a typo, that's the base one. And that is the last one is the relative one. The relative one is between zero and one. So you can use it for percentage, um, for a progress bar or whatever. And that is the base functionality. And then of course we have the gameplay tag because every one of these attributes will create a gameplay tag that you can use, for example, to listen to that gameplay tag channel if something happens. The format is always attrib attribute set dot your attribute set name and then the attribute name. That is automatically generated. You don't have to do it manually. And these are there to listen to from a UI, for example, or with another game logic. Same thing, we will do that in the um, next video that will be more practical. Today, we just look at the theory. So switching to our attribute generator, look at the link below. Um, that will um, need three parameters, the set name, 
a comment that you can identify it during development and then the attributes that you need to define. In our case, let's say we have a kind of sword fighting attribute set that only comes with maybe a certain weapon. So we call it sword fight. It's our sword fight attribute set. And as attributes, set, let's say we have something like uh, swiftness. So how fast our animation will play and uh, something like sword technique whatever that means, maybe that might be a damage multiplicator. And very important down here, we have this first generated attribute set. This needs to be checked for the first one, and only the first one. For every further attribute set, uncheck it. Because simply I put the base class and some logging definitions um, in here. And if you have a double or more, it will generate errors. So just once. Then we press the generate button. You get these two files, whatever they say and we can start copying them into new C++ classes that we generate within our Unreal Editor. So let's start Visual Studio actually from here and yeah, close that down actually. <laughs> okay, not the most direct way, but whatever. Um, Important if you here look at the left, we are in the Lyra starter game, we are in plugins, in game features, in your plugin name, and then in your runtime. And here I would expect from the last tutorial this attribute set character base stats, and now we want to create a new one. Let's uh, actually restart Unreal from the Visual Studio to initialize the creation of the C class. Okay, and here again in tools, new C++ class. You don't have to derive it from anything, just, uh, just none, next one. Make sure that you select the right runtime here, the runtime of your plugin. It's public here, so we have a public and a private part. And very important, we give the whole thing a name and that name needs to be remembered because that's a name that the generator will need to function. So we call it here, yeah, attribute set sword fighting. Uh, there's a team missing, so sword fighting. And we copy that to reuse it in the generator and just create the class. Okay, class is created, uh, kind of empty, but yeah, we will we'll delete that anyway. And then we switch to the generator. We messed up our name, so red, yeah, use the right name, attribute set sword fighting. And that's it, generating the two content classes and copying them to the Visual Studio. Okay, so just here the button, it's blue, so it's copied. I yeah, can actually load that new and stop the debugging. Yes. And yeah, no. now I have the two classes. I delete the content that was created from um, Unreal and Visual Studio, I make sure that that name is exactly the name as I see it here on the left. And then I'm ready to go. I copy the content there and pass it into the classes. That's the definition class, the dot .h, and that's the implementation class, the dot .cpp. For details, what actually happens here, better go to somebody like Syst, who's explaining that in details and who's <laughs> much more better in C++ than I am. So compiling it looks good. Everything created, that's great. And yeah, I would say, let's have a look at what it works. And here important, you have to be in development editor um, to get anything done. Otherwise you will generate a lot of errors. So launching Unreal from here. And we would expect now that a new um, attribute set is visible and is usable from things like our blueprint for granting the attribute sets. So let's go there. Here is our BP attribute granter. And if you look what I can grant, oh yeah, I can now grant the attribute set sword fighting that was not there before. Okay, then let's go, go to the hero class because of course, um, when we get a new attribute set, we want to report new things out of it. So we change the former base class to this new sword fighting class. 
and then we can really also report on the values there. So switching to sword fighting, sword fighting, and here again we need it. Uh, where it is, yeah, yeah, sword fighting. So and now we yeah don't want to get strength anymore because the new attribute set has different attributes like our swiftness and our sword technique. And here, if I filter by sword, you see here all the functions are available, getting the base, the current, the tech, the relative, and also the whole attribute. But I can also set the base sword technique, so the base value for it. That's not something that I would normally do manually. It's still available here, being server-based there, but it would be better to serve that or define that in a data table. That's exactly what we will do in the next tutorial, how to use that. So I just uh, rewire here to report on the current um, sort technique, changing the name here. Okay, and then of course that comes from a new attribute set though that cast here that I have on the left is not valid anymore. So I'm deleting that. Yeah. And now I want to cast to the new attribute set called attribute set sort fighting and yeah i can rewire that and if the cast is successful i will print out what happened here good compile looks good saving and trying out so same thing i run into the attribute granter i expect to get the attribute set the sort fighting one and I would expect that I then get a couple of attributes that are not initialized in this case, so it should be zero. But here, yeah, the current sort technique is currently at zero. I have a new attribute, that's great. And I can do something with it. That is exactly what we will do in the next video. So remember, you can filter everything here. All the functions will report on different log levels from log to very verbose, if you want to know it all. And um, you see here, every step is always reported in the log and can be reacted to. It makes the whole thing a bit more visible. Good, that's it for today. Let's see how we do this in a more practical scenario next time. Thank you very much. See you.